Nam, <coughs> welcome for our third lesson and our introduction to computers. And today we are taking through, we are going through a data processing and networking. Hi, everyone. Now, lesson one, we did about a general introduction to computer systems, and in our lesson two. We did uh, <clears throat> a jack through uh, hardware and software. Whereby we learned what an hardware is, and we say that that hardware is uh, a physical parts of a computer system that you can touch and you can you can you can see. And uh, we actually mentioned various types of hardwares whereby we mentioned uh, we are going to related examples of uh, <clears throat> input devices output devices and also uh, storage devices whereby we say that storage has been subdivided into two is primary there is primary storage and there is a uh, auxiliary or secondary storage also in input we mentioned a number of items whereby you remember we mentioned a uh, mouse as an input device keyboard uh, scanners mics <coughs> as an input devices just like this one and uh, we actually also made a <coughs> we did actually mention or highlighted some number of output devices whereby we highlighted some of them <clears throat> one including the screen whereby it communicates it gives us the directives that you can use to control the, what is happening in the computer system that is through what you call the graphical user interface we also highlighted plotters printers speakers and so on so today we are learning about data processing and networking uh, <clears throat> when we mentioned data processing and networking these are three words which actually has got a baffle uh, meaning data Earlier on, we defined data as the raw facts that are being used to process information. And this word processing, we say that it is the heart of manipulating data. And we give an instance where, for example, 3 times 4 is equal to 12. Whenever we say that 3 and 4, the 3 and 4 could be our raw facts which is actually our data but the act of multiplying the act of multiplying this one actually makes it that that one is processing if we process three and four by by through multiplication obviously we are going to get 12. if we process three and four through addition we are going to get seven so the results here is the results here is the information so in short we know that information now is a processed data now there's another emerging word here networking we earlier said that networking is the heart of interconnecting computers more than one computers when two computers are sharing information three four five they're sharing information we say that that's been networked when a computer prints a document and the printer responds that printer has been networked with the computer so without wasting much time we just want to get and know some of the highlights that we are going to see through this 
course. Uh, <clears throat> highlights number one is about areas that you're going to cover. Highlight number one, sorry, is about areas that you're going to cover, whereby I've actually highlighted about the aims and objectives of this lesson. Data, processing, and networking. And then maybe you can take a snapshot of that. Those are some of the subtopics that you're going to focus on until the points, until we actually arrived at the points of discussion. Now, <clears> hence, <throat> why? Why should we learn this lesson? Why should you learn about data processing and networking? Whatever you are going to learn here, by the end of it all, you should be in a position to understand four items. Number one is the concept of data processing and data processing cycle. That is the first point that you will be in a position to understand. Another thing is objectives and steps in data processing. What are these steps? How? Or what are the objectives of processing data? So that's what you should be in a position to understand by the end of the lesson three. Also, the third one is you have also you should be in a position to understand various types and kinds of data processing. How is data being processed? What are these types? And then the last one is how now this data processing is being applied in day-to-day -day life. That's in our businesses. So those are some of the core objectives that you should focus on throughout the lesson. Now, when you talk about data, data stands on its own as the raw facts. These are the raw facts that a computer needs for it to process. That's why you have a keyboard. You'll always be typing information into the computer. You are collecting data. And to make this uh, a way, to put it in a way that, let me put it in a layman's language whereby we can be in a position to understand and know exactly what I mean by the term data. Now, <clears throat> in most cases, we have been doing a number of researches. And uh, let me use a very good example like, we want to uh, highlight and know that this is the right time that we are supplying the mosquito nets. It's not a matter of just waking up in the morning and supply the mosquito nets because it's raining. What the clinicians or the public health officers usually do is, or those involved in that department is, they visit every health center and try as much as possible to collect to collect some uh, data concerning the uh, maybe, maybe the the challenges or most of the problems that are reported by the patients now for example if mosquito causes malaria and if you can go to a health center and you get you find that most uh, expect that mothers are admitted with malaria or young children are admitted with malaria or the others are admitted with malaria then you will be in a position to highlight and note that then it is the season that mosquitoes are breeding then and health center institutions will be in a position now to consider using the data they have collected to process and give a final information which usually is a reward that is it valid or not valid is it time to supply or not time also reviewing on the last distribution today it still exists or it's or, 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 or that has been used up so that's when we talk of data now this issue of processing remember that we have said that it is now the kind of manipulating the raw materials to get to give a result. We have vehicles moving on tires. Those tires have been processed from wrappers and everything and has been mixed with chemicals to make it harder. So that, that thing has been processed 
but it at the end of it all it is still a wrapper so the same thing to our data so in this case <clears throat> we want to see other concepts of data processing and data can come in various ways we have got uh, data may be numerical for example payrolls include so many numerics that's data but you will never interpret each before it is processed to be a complete stuff that's what we call it a payroll we have got the employees number it also includes data but once it is complete it makes a meaning and you can use a very good example your index number your registration number if it is 110 doesn't make sense but suppose it is 110 ed he struck 2020 it makes a sense and gives you a suggestion number that every number is counted and is considered so that's why you talk of data so this data can come in so many ways it can be the products names it can be the student names it can be the leaders names and so forth so that's uh, <clears throat> that is the facts about data now when you talk about the data processing is actually the manner in which this data now is being manipulated to give a specific uh, or a useful meaning to give a useful uh, results so data processing is actually the conversion of data into a more useful form in other words is to say that we are transmitting data into a meaningful information called through a process called data processing so every other thing we know we go we, for, for instances you can go to a shop and you buy for let me could have used as a very good example a yogurt yogurt still remains as milk but it's no longer the same milk that you you're using a, as fresh as they are but it has been processed to put a flavor to put another taste and to be contained in a way that it gives a different it gives a different flavor and a different way in which someone can be in a position to observe and can be kept for a number of days so that's something that has been processed so data processing goes through same ways but now <clears throat> we have the information which we have said that it is the final results it is the results of data that has been processed and to get the fact is that there is a difference between data and information in most cases we find people saying that give me the information but they usually failed to ask for the data data most of the times looks like this meaningless but we usually needs the final results so in this case we have got data and we have got information how do we differentiate them that's why i've been abortion in this screen you can see i've been abortion to differentiate the two of them the first one we say that data is just about raw materials these are the raw facts the raw records we will never get information without data so these are the raw records and information is a completed ones and we also say that data prevails whereas information is what is necessary what is necessary or what should be done now data processing has got a cycle like any other thing that usually have a cycle of processing so in this case we talk of input using a mouse we input data using mouse we scan hide them into the computer for editing or for sending through them surface or yeah so we are trying to input you take your camera you take photos you are inputting data then you you now format it you now process it you now furnish it to be a final item to be a final results that it's it has got a very good impressions and uh, it's very easy to read very easy to interpret 
something like that. You so you process. Once you process, you either give an output either through a projector whereby you can be showing videos. That's a process. You have already collected, you have processed, you're now giving a result. So there, there, there's only a three mode of or there is a three cycles that data buses before it is completely uh, viable and good for now absorption outside your system so that's number one is you input data process and output whereby that output now will be the information and in most cases also can be the data we can as well output data that's why it can be in a portion to store and retrieve yeah now <clears throat> data we have got so many various types of data so the first types of data is qualitative and in this case don't confuse qualitative data and quantitative data when you talk of a qualitative data is something that for example you're doing an average of a student student scores 40 in english scores 60 in maths scores 80 in science scores 42 in social studies and maybe in other subsequent subjects so for you to get a final points for you to get a final mark out of 100 you have to add all of them divided by by the number and then you get the average so average or something fair something you are giving a fair result we call that one a qualitative because you are trying to reach at a quality all these things have got ingredients they are doing what you call quantitative data those are quantitative data in every bottle in every packet there is ingredients given there so all those ingredients forms a qualitative because this is something trying to arrive to a quality but quantitative is something countable. That's why you say this one is 50 kg, 50 kilograms of sugar. You say this one is 125 grams of butter. You say this one is 24 liters of wine or something like that. Something that it is countable and measurable. You can also talk of degrees Celsius. Like, oh, your temperature is at 7, it's at 9, it is 26. That one is something quantitative. That's a quantitative data now then we have the numeric types whereby we usually have you are running on a negative figure or you are just keeping on counting on a positive figure so this one usually varies with the integers integers so this one is what we call a numeric types of data then we have what you call floating point presentations whereby in most cases we have been using so many other components in actually trying to justify the floating point presentation of data this is a type of data that we are usually usually use the mantisa we have the mantisa we have the radax yeah or actually usually call the base and then we have the what you call the exponent now besides the above major three or four that we have talked about data types we have got also data that includes alphabetic data and alpha numeric data when i talk about alphabetic data and alphanumeric data i mean i'm talking of alphanumeric alphabetic data whereby they're using alphabeticals to represent data well whereas alpha numeric makes a spot the numerics that's the numbers and the alphabetics alphabeticals so those are some uh, types of those are the four major types of data so don't forget we have under the floating the presentation of data we have got the mantisa the radix and the exponent which is usually uh, most people usually confuse them now we talk about processing what what kinds how what are these kinds of data Processing. Data processing is about we have got around eight or seven 
stuffs. So in this case, we have got the manual data processing. Whereby you usually take your pen and write on a paper. Sorry, and write on a paper. So that one is usually called the data processing. You use data is processed without the help of any mechanical device. You just use your pen and a paper and you calculate three times three is equals to nine. That is manual. Then you have the manical mechanical data processing whereby we usually use most of the time we use the calculators. We're using some mechanicals to calculate like three times three and you're using it a calculator it keeps you automatically that it is nine then you have what you call electronic data processing in this case in electronic data processing actually the data is processed by either analog or digital computers and i think we had earlier talk about the difference between analog computers digital computers and hybrid computers now <clears throat> What are the objectives? Why? Why should we? Why should we be doing data processing? Why should we process data? So after the industrial revolution, the needs of the mankind increased. And actually in this case, man had to deal with large volume of data, whereby you usually don't have enough time to manipulate them. And you will be running short of time since you, a human being just can be tired and the brains also cause off so we needed a mechanism to do the data processing so the information collected is to be sorted out stored and retrieved at short intervals in the in actually this actually necessitated the concept of data processing so we have got a way why the reason as actually the main thing as to why we have to process this data. So in most cases, the data processing system must be responsible to supply the information when it is needed so as to make the performance of the organization optimum. So that means with, with machines that will assist in data processing, you are going to make work easier and you will be in a position actually or you will mark major on most of the operations within a very short time. Taking an example whereby you have to process, you have to open account, you have to check all the data and everything. Actually, understand you could not do all that. But now that means you could need a lot of workers to work on the same. But now provided that you're using a machine, that means it's only one skilled personnel can serve a thousand plus and solve so many problems. So that's the main thing as to why data processing became and uh, became actually a necessity. So let us now have a look at the general objectives of data processing. Why the, the, the objective? Why should we? So number one is we handle huge volume of data at a core, as I've explained. We have the quantitative and quanti qualitative uh, information whereby you can be calculating, finding the fairness or the half average, checking on the quality at the same time, being in a position to count a, either a, continua, a continuous phenomena or a countable phenomena. Now, now then we have a proper time information, prof, proper and timely information. That means it engages much on accuracy. Like if I do 1,000 times 1,000 times 1,000 times 10 times 5 times 6, I don't have time to do it manually. So within a very short time or in a fraction of a second, I'm getting a results if I'm using any mechanical or electrical data processing. Then we have the storage and retrieval of data. We sometimes do forget things as humans. But the machines will never forget anything that we save. It saves a large volume of data and we can retrieve and get it back, all of them, at any given time. Also, it helps in decision making, like the use of software such as uh, SPSS, Statistical uh, Packages for Statistical Census. So that one actually gives us the right data 
processing. So those are some of the objectives. <clears throat> you will go through this in the screen. We have got improves productivity, which is actually very true. Actually, to improve productivity, various measures are to be identified and implemented. Okay, it's also possible through the proper, uh, through the properly designed data processing system. So that one actually keeps or it improves and heightens the productivity. Also maintains performance at optimum level and efficiency in office management. We have also seen this almost everywhere. Almost, almost every office, every department is using a computer or they're using a, a specific machine. If you go to ICU, there's some computers they're controlling the heartbeat, controlling the breathing pattern and all those. You go to an office, you go to a point of sale point, you will get all this stuff. So that is majorly what you talk about, efficiency of office management. Now, <clears throat> steps in data processing. We have got around five steps in data processing. Number one is identify the data. What do you mean by identify the data? What do you want to collect? And why? What do you want to collect for? You don't just have to collect data. You collect data specifically based on something that you want to, to use for. So identify the type of data that you want. Then number two is input of data. Now, once you have identified the data and collected, you now input them into the system for processing. Then manipulation of data. That means now we are arranging and balancing and putting them together to give a valid information. Once we do the output of the information, that's when you can get the results. Then after getting the results, we now do what you call the storage. We store the information now. We store the information. That means you can store either in the auxiliary storage devices or we are going to store them in the primary devices. Now, <clears throat> number one, as you have talked, you, you, you will be in a portion to check all through those uh, processes as highlighted and as uh, explained. Now, we have got a, after that, we have got a practical data processing applications in businesses whereby we have been apportioned to witness how data has been stored, how data has been kept, and how that data has been applied in various places in a business. Number one is process control. Actually, in the production processes, a computer is directly connected to some plant to control and monitor it. Here, the computer receives actually the data directly from the plant. In this case, it analyzes the input data and initiates action to control the ongoing processes. So that one, we talk of process control. That's where we apply computers. Also in accounting, I don't have to explain much about that. Banks are using computers. Every other in schools, wherever where the school fees paid, wherever in balancing or producing payrolls and the rest. So accounting also applies. This one is where data processing applies the most. Then payroll preparation, which we all know. By the time you produce payroll of 26,000 or 30,000 or 80,000 individuals, a computer needs to be used or any other mechanical device to do the data processing. Then we have the sales analysis, whereby we have been doing the analysis of various uh, of, of various uh, items. And in this case, data processing system is highly useful in sales analysis, whereby the sales manager can prepare the sales forecast on the basis of per month sales reports and the rest. And that will only again usually guides the company whether they are making a profit, they are making a progress, or they are stuck somewhere, or they are doing a number of losses. We have got also in inventory management. Even you can experience when it's on a dairy farming and the rest, or farming inputs and the likes. It usually uses the inventory management whereby so many stuff will be kept and will be reviewed. Then you have the house office automation, whereby information is staying used in a modern offices and the business organizations 
are dependent upon computer-based office automation for their competitiveness and better management. Then we have got in the banking and insurance sector, insurance and stock proking. Finally, we have managerial aid, whereby we can we have been abortion to use the data processing systems, whereby it is usually being used in managerial aid, either for decision making or solving business problems. Data processing operations as listed here, and you'll get your hard copy whereby you'll be also be in a portion to read through this. We think that data after some processing is transformed into information. That's why now we're talking about the data processing operations. Number one, we have data generation. We generate data. Then after that, we record. This is actually, raw data is converted into an acceptable form. That is, the data is transcribed from the source documents on the guards or on some other specified forms and are made readable for the machine. This operation is just performed throughout the IBO cycle. So you'll get the notes and you'll read about this. You'll get to know about the data processing operations. We also have verification. Most of the time when you open an account, you'll always be receiving something like enter the verification code you receive. So for security purposes and the rest and the others and the likes, verification is being used. <clears throat> now we have classifications. Classification actually in this case is actually it is the classification of information which is the next important operation in which the data is separated into various categories. Then we have the sorting. We sort data according to the specified and predetermined order. Then we have the merging. Merging means that we are combining the most resemblable in an order whereby we sort them together. Then we have the calculation. In this case, calculation of greater magnitude can be processed. Calculation also involves solving equations and manipulations of the source, data such as additional subtraction in the scene. Then now we end up in the data storage, whereby we choose whether to store them in auxiliaries or secondary storages, or data that has been processed can be stored in the primary storages such as the ROM. Such as the ROM. <clears throat> Now, we have got also retrieval. When you talk about data retrieval, that means we are trying to get them back. We are, we are trying to reaccess what we had earlier, earlier processed. Then we have the reporting. We report the results of what we have already done and the results of a processed data. That's when you will get. So that's why we say that the process information actually in this case may be reported in a number of ways depending on the use of the results the results may be printed out in the form of base slips bills and etc and etc now <clears throat> as we finalize we are getting three points here number one is data it is actually this is actually the raw form cannot be used. It must be converted into information to make it useful. Another number two, you are saying that to process the data, various steps are involved, such as identification of data all the way to manipulation of data and etc. Then the that form, actually in this case, is data processing is useful for decision making and improving productivity in an organization now <clears throat> some points of uh, items to be discussed in this case number one is you you have to make a short notes concerning the objectives of the data processing and then another thing is uh, what are the steps involved in data processing you try as much as possible to explain concerning the same that you can read on the screen then you can explain the details about data processing operations 
thank you so much that's the end of our lesson three and uh, our lesson four is coming where we shall be talking about communication and we're going to see various types of networks networking whereby we are going to learn the remaining part under this data processing is the sizes of data that we have we are yet to do it practically from bits bytes all the way as we process downwards so till then thank you